Guys, my name's Lachlan, and I'm back today with another Xbox One vs PlayStation 4 video. And today we're going to be talking about the controller on the next gen consoles. So, to kick it off, I thought we'd talk about the controller on, you know, current generation consoles, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. So, like I say, and as I mentioned, firstly, is that I have owned both consoles, so, you know, both both controllers, you know, have been around me. Personally, if I were to choose, I'd have the Xbox 360 controller, just because of the build quality, the way it feels, um, it feels a lot more sturdy, a lot more rigid than the PlayStation 3 controller does, whereas it, the PlayStation 3 controller feels really plasticky, um, the size is really small in comparison as well, so it feels really condensed on your fingers, um, which is kind of my complaint only with the PlayStation 3 controller, if it was a bit bigger, uh, felt a bit more solid in terms of build quality, it probably would be a great um, controller in general. So, what's the improvement with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4? Now, the Xbox One has imported lots and lots and lots of new stuff, so firstly it's got impulse triggers, which are sort of more direct, accurate triggers to make you feel a bit more into the game. Uh, it has better sort of ela well, elasticity, I don't really know how to say it. It's a bit more flexible, a bit more um, reactant to your pressure, so the amount of pressure you put down on the fingers uh, means that the controller is going to react in a certain way. It also has a high speed data module, so there's no lag time between the Xbox and the controller, which is fantastic, so there is literally no lag time. Although you don't really notice it, it can happen sometimes, especially when it's low on battery. It has a new precise D-pad, probably my only complaint of the current Xbox 360 controller is that the D-pad pretty much sucks, I'd rather if the the, the little buttons were separate or either really accurate, because at the moment it's just sort of like an analogue stick for arrows, it feels really strange. It has redesigned grips and contours, so better grip, you know, personally I like the Xbox 360 grip, if it's got even better grip that's fantastic. Battery pack removed, finally, another complaint with the Xbox 360 controller, hate batteries, in fact I'm recharging a controller right now with rechargeable batteries because it's, it's just what it does, I'd rather have a built in battery pack, uh, the battery pack is actually on the back of the controller now, it's built in though, so you still theoretically have some kind of charging to do, but it's, it's better, it's a step ahead to say the least. Sleep mode, now sleep mode is basically just the controller, you know when the uh, like when the screens go dark on the Xbox 360, for example, the controller will sort of go dark as well in order to save battery, which is fantastic. So, no battery times wasted, especially if you leave your controller on like me. Sometimes you kill the battery instantly. So it's great to see that they're actually importing some kind of sleep mode, which corresponds with both the console and the controller. And um, it's worth mentioning that the Xbox One controller is actually connected by Wi-Fi Direct instead of Bluetooth. So there's no Bluetooth or um, there's no Bluetooth 2.1 EDR. It's Wi-Fi Direct. Apparently that's better. Not sure to be honest. Haven't done my research on it. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, both forms of connecting a controller to the console is great. And it also has four hour charging time, so four hours to get a complete charge, which supposedly is going to last something like 20, 24 to 48 hours, it depends really. Now the PlayStation 4 has its own sort of utilized skills, admittedly the improvements aren't as you know, significant. They haven't mentioned much about the controller. Obviously, it has a very evident touchpad, which, in all honesty, I think is going to be fantastic for them. Uh, the touchpad could, you know, for example, when we're doing melee or, you know, something in a game, you can just swipe with the touchpad. I know there was rumors of Battlefield 4 talking about actually changing weapon via the touchpad because the analog sticks are designed in a way that you can quickly swipe to the touchpad almost immediately rather than having to, like, literally take your fingers off of the analog stick, you know, and take your time with it so it should be a quick mechanism hopefully can be used for something like i don't know reloading switching weapons that kind of stuff um first person shooter wise it'll be good to see the implications it has on, for example sports games that'd be great to see it has a light bar at the top which will determine what person you are so you know as usual um on playstation 3 controller you have four lights which determine whether you're player one two three or four instead you get a light now so a certain color uh, which tells you whether you're, you know, player one, player two, player three, player four. It has enhanced vibration, so better vibration. I 
give or take, you know, whatever you want to do with that. Uh, I guess it's okay, you know. I don't really use the vibration a lot, because in all honesty, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. But, you know, at least they're improving it. Built-in mono speaker and headset jack, so basically something they decided to do after seeing the success it has with the Xbox 360 controller is build a jack into the bottom of the controller so you can have, you know, wired microphones that are right f that run straight off the controller. Uh, also using headphones for the, straight from the controller, which is which is a nice feature. It also obviously has the speakers on the front of the controller. In all honesty, I wouldn't want to use them, but you know, it's nice to know that they're there. The share button now is obviously there, so, you know, goodbye to the start and select button, there's the share button and there's another button. The share button's basically for live streaming, sending video and recording video, which is something that both the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 feature. And it has new triggers and bumpers, so a redesigned shape of triggers and bumpers that look like bent toenails by the looks of things. But it's nice to see that they've kind of thought about that, the current... The current bumpers and triggers are horrible, to be honest. The the curved shape doesn't really match it. I'd rather have um, a sort of flicked shape. If you look at the back of the Xbox 360 controller, the LT and RT, or what they'd call R2 and R1, is, you know, it's much more... It's It feels better. It's much more evident, so you're not missing it, you know. Well, I don't miss it, you know, when I pull down the controller. Just It's it's nice. It's It feels better. It has a better sort of um, springiness to it, which makes the controller feel a lot better as well. And it was also worth mentioning the PlayStation 4 can connect up to, I believe it was four controllers, whereas the Xbox One can connect up to eight. So a bit of a difference in, you know, the amount of controllers that can be connected to the console. Um... Lots of implications of what that can mean. So, in all, I have done this before. In all, I see of FIFA, more than having four players, so maybe five or six. So, that could become an issue theoretically, having only four controllers, whereas the Xbox has eight. Eight controllers is great to have. Um, I mean, I'm sure the PlayStation at the moment is something like twelve or ten. It's ridiculous, but now it's being dropped down to four. It's it's iffy, you know, it's it's a strange thing for them to do. Personally, I would have preferred if they just kept it as as it was, you know, having about 10 controllers. But, you know, maybe that's something to do with the internal specs of the console. So, if I were to choose between the Xbox One controller and the PlayStation 4 controller, I'd probably go for the Xbox One controller, just because I'm a massive fan of the Xbox 360 controller. And it's not much... The good thing about the next generation consoles is that they're not too much different. So, there's no there's no big difference. You know, some people were thinking that they were going to completely change these controllers. In all honesty, they've just made them better than the current generation ones, which is great. I also like the look of the Xbox One controller. It looks very sleek. Um... You know, the top of it with the glowing Xbox symbol looks fantastic as well. I, uh, overall, I just think it looks better uh, from what I've heard about the upgrades. I think apparently the controller was a hundred million dollar project that they spent their time on. So I think the controller is definitely a lot more significant on the Xbox One. And it will probably feel better as well. PlayStation 4 controller doesn't look bad. It, it looks strange in some places like the... For example, the grips on it are extremely long for some reason. Um, the touchpad looks out of place but you know it's gonna it's a very useful feature and it's probably gonna be a great feature for them to use but i just think it could have looked better it looks like a very sort of plasticky thing um overall so like i say i would choose the xbox one controller but like i say guys you have to wait till you get hands on with these things for example if you are going to choose between the xbox 360 sorry the xbox one and playstation 4 you actually need to you know hold the controllers in your hand play the console and let us know like what you think so at the moment i'm waiting on eurogamer 2013 so i can get my hands on both the xbox one and playstation 4 and I assume what I have already suspected, you know, so the Xbox One controller being my favorite is most likely going to happen, but I'm very sort of open to the changes. Um, I'm just looking forward to see how the touchpad's being used. I'm looking forward to see how these modifications on the Xbox One controller will improve my game. So, guys, it's been me, Lachlan. Like, comment, subscribe as usual. Uh, there'll be more videos coming on their way now, um, hopefully every day or every other day, as you've seen so far from my current upload schedule. The next time we're going to be talking about either the online service or the price, I'll probably do online services I like to discuss about PlayStation Network and, you know, Xbox Live. So I'll see you then.